Greetings again everyone, welcome back to my channel. Here we have another algebraic simultaneous equation that we are going to solve. Now in this problem we have x plus y is equal to 6, that's equation 1 and equation 2 is x times y is also equal to 6. I know for some of you that looking at these equations, you might be wondering if solving this is even possible. Now what I will say is that it is possible to solve these equations. And hopefully by the end of this lesson you will learn how to solve problems such as these. You can check out my Math Olympiad playlist to see how to solve other simultaneous equations such as these. Alright, let's start our solutions. So we start by rewriting equation 1 making y the subject as y is equal to negative x plus 6. Then we take equation 2 and we sub the value of y into equation 2. So we take the value of y which is here and we put it as the y in equation 2. So we have x times negative x plus 6 and then we have that equal to 6. Then we go ahead and expand our brackets by saying x times negative x is negative x squared and x times positive 6 gives us positive 6x. Now from here in equation 2 we can subtract 6 from both sides of the equation so that means that on the right there will be 0 and on the left we would have negative 6. So we would have negative x squared plus 6x minus 6 is equal to 0. Then if you look here we have what we call a quadratic equation and so our value for a must be a positive. So we divide the equation by negative 1 which is now going to give us x squared minus 6x plus 6 is equal to 0. So if we look at this equation, we will see a quadratic expression where our value of a is positive 1, our value of b is negative 6, and our number term which is c is positive 6. And now from here we solve the value of x by using our quadratic formula which states that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And this is all over 2 times a. Using the values of a, b, and c, we plug that into our formula. So that means we'd have x is equal to negative in bracket negative 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 6 squared. So we'd have negative 6 squared, and then we say minus 4ac, which is 4 times 1 times positive 6. And we have that all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. Now in simplifying what we have here, we'd have x is equal to negative times negative 6 gives us positive 6. So we'd have 6 plus or minus. The square root of negative 6 squared is going to be positive 36. Then we say minus 4 times 1 times 6. That's going to give us 24. So we have 36 minus 24. And we have all of that over 2 times 1, which is 2. Now in evaluating this further, we would then have x is equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 24 gives us 12. So we would have 6 plus or minus 12 and we have that divided by 2. Now from here we can list the factors of 12 and have them being rooted. So we would have the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So we'll be using these two factors of 12 to simplify for our solution of x. So where do we go from here? We say therefore x is equal to 6 plus or minus so not the square root of 4 is 2. So 4 is a square number so the square root of 4 is 2. And then we know that the square root of 3 is an irrational number so we can leave it as the square root of 3. So we have 6 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3 all over 2. And from here we can simplify this as saying 6 divided by 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3 also divided by 2. And then from here we bring all fractions to their lowest term so we have 2 into 6 gives us 3 and 2 into 2 gives us 1. So now we write our final solutions for x by saying that x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 3. 
Now having this, it means that we'd have two solutions for x. So the first solution of x is that x is equal to 3 plus the square root of 3. And the second solution for x is that x is equal to 3 minus the square root of 3. Okay, wonderful. Now we have the solutions for x, we then find the solutions for y. So using what we have earlier, we said that y is equal to negative x plus 6. Now what we will do from here is that we will rewrite the value for y as 6 minus x. So all that we did was just to change around the numbers. And in doing this, it will make our work out solution easier. So from here, we would say that y is equal to 6 minus x. And what we will say as well is that we will use the first solution for y to be equal to 6 minus the first solution of x. So we know the first solution of x is 3 plus the square root of 3. So that means that y is equal to 6 minus in bracket would have 3 plus the square root of 3. Now having this, it therefore means that y is equal to 6 minus. Now a negative 1 times 3 gives us negative 3, so we have minus 3. And the negative is going to change the positive here, so it's going to be minus the square root of 3. So now from here, we would have y is equal to 6 minus 3 gives us 3. And then we have minus the square root of 3. So this is our first solution of y. Now our second solution for y is that y is equal to 6 minus the second solution of x which is 3 minus the square root of 3. Then we evaluate this by putting back our 6 and then we say negative 1 times 3 is going to give us negative 3 so that's 6 minus 3 and this negative 1 is going to make this negative a positive so we'd have 6 minus 3 plus the square root of 3. Well, now 6 minus 3 gives us 3, so we'd have 3 plus the square root of 3. And this is our second solution of y. So let us look at our solutions. We said that x1 comma y1 is equal to 3 plus the square root of 3. So that's the first solution of x and for the first solution of y is that y is equal to 3 minus the square root of 3. So x1 comma y1 is 3 plus the square root of 3 comma 3 minus the square root of 3. Now x2 comma y2 is equal to 3 minus the square root of 3 and 3 plus the square root of 3. Now let us see if we can verify our solutions for x and y. So we'll verify our solutions down below here. So our first equation is that x plus y is equal to 6 and we will use this first equation to verify our first solution. We can choose either solutions as you can see the solutions are really saying the same thing. So from here we find the sum of the first solution of x and y. So that would mean that we have 3 plus the square root of 3. And we're going to add that to the value of y1, which is 3 minus the square root of 3. And this is equal to 6. And now if you look here, we see plus the square root of 3 and minus the square root of 3. So these can be cancelled out. And that would leave us with 3 plus 3. And 3 plus 3 gives us 6. So here we have it. Our first solution is now verified.
Now here we are going to verify our solutions using equation 2 and this time we will use our second pair of solutions. So that means we would have the solution of x2 and the solution of y2 and we're going to multiply these solutions together. So we'd have x2 would be 3 minus the square root of 3 so we can put that in brackets and then we'd bracket the value of y2 which is 3 plus the square root of 3. And that's also equal to 6. Now look closely at what we have inside the bracket. You'll see this expression coming out where we have a minus b in one bracket and in the other bracket we would see a plus b. Now this is what we call the difference of two squares where this is simplified as a squared minus b squared. So we'll be simplifying our second equation by using what we have here as the difference of two squares. Now using what we understand from here, we would have 3 being squared, then we would have minus the square root of 3, which is also being squared. So 3 squared is 3 times 3, and 3 times 3 gives us 9, and then the square root of 3 being squared means that we'll cancel the square root sign, so we'll have that being just 3. So 9 minus 3 also gives us 6. And this now proves that our solutions are correct. Thank you for staying with me to the end of this video. I hope that this was informative and that you have learned much. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, please smash that like button, share and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos like this. Now thanks again for watching, stay tuned to my new updates, take care and until then I will see you soon.